Hi, I'm Bob German, a cloud advocate at Microsoft, and I'm here to share tips and tricks about the use of a tool called ngrok. If you've ever developed a Teams application, you've probably encountered a tool called ngrok. Tutorials, labs, documentation, blog articles, all of them love to point you to ngrok. In this video, you'll learn what ngrok is, how it helps to make Teams development easier, and what to do if you or your organization aren't comfortable using ngrok. First, the shocking truth. Teams applications do not run in Microsoft Teams. There, I've said it, it's out. Okay, Teams apps do appear in the Microsoft Teams user interface, so users don't really notice the difference, but the actual app is running somewhere else. For instance, a tab or anything visual like a task module or a configuration page, those are implemented as web pages that you could host anywhere you want and you could build them with any tools you wish. Things like bots and messaging extensions, those are web services. Again, you can host them anywhere you want. As a result of this, a Teams developer's rig is a lot like any other web developer. Uh, you're going to have a local web server and you're going to be accessing that in the case of a tab or something that uses a web page, your Teams client is going to directly access that local web server and pull in Microsoft Teams itself over the internet and stitch it all together. Um, in the case of something like a bot, however, the message actually is going to be blocked by the developer's firewall by default. So the message is going to be coming from, say, the Azure bot service, where it, which is the case for bots and messaging extensions. And it's, how is that going to get to my local web server so that I can debug the thing? Well, that's where ngrok comes in. ngrok provides a tunnel from the public internet um, over to your local web server so that you can debug. So let's see how that works. I'm going to come in and actually build the world's simplest web application, which is just hello world, one file. I'm going to serve that up on a local uh, web server using the HTTP server um, in Node. Okay, so now let's go ahead and navigate to that. And it's HTTP, not HTTPS, localhost, colon 8080. Works great. Now I'll go and open that up to the internet. So I'm gonna say ngrok, HTTP port 8080, and it will actually show me this. So you leave this running the whole time you're using ngrok, you just make a new command line and do that. Um, I'm using Commander, but you could use any console you want, including the uh, command line um, on Windows, uh, Mac OS, or Linux. And so you can see that it's forwarding from these funny URLs, my choice of HTTP or HTTPS, over to localhost colon 8080. So let's test it out. I'm gonna take the HTTPS URL and paste it into my web browser. And what you'll see is that not only am I gonna see hello world, but notice that down in the lower left, I actually have a trace. So the browser tried to grab a fav icon, didn't have one of those, so the server returned a 404, and then it returned the, the hello world page, right? Very simple. The interesting thing is that this works anywhere on the internet. So now here I am on my phone, same URL, and it's actually working from my phone. So um, that is a blessing for something like mobile device testing, but it also adds a, a bit of a wrinkle here, which is that a lot of IT departments are not gonna trust this thing. Okay, um, this is mainly an issue if you're working behind like a corporate firewall where you have a perimeter-based security because even though I'm sure you wouldn't do anything malicious, from the IT person's point of view, um, you could someone could stand up ngrok on a computer somewhere behind the firewall and then use that as part as a launch pad for doing other attacks behind the firewall. So um, if you're in kind of a more modern setup, zero trust as they call it, um, then you, you really probably don't even have that kind of a configuration. But for people who have that kind of configuration, it can give them heartburn. So it's really useful, but I'm also going to talk about how to not use it if you just can't, if you're not comfortable with it, or if your IT department is blocking it. 
Before we go on though, let me just show you one other cool feature, which is this web interface. So I can actually drop that URL into my browser locally, of course, and I can see a trace of everything that went across NGROC. So really handy for debugging, right? Handles a number of problems. So while the tunnel was obvious, um, NGROC was actually doing more than that for us in this scenario. It also provided HTTPS support with a proper authoritative certificate that I don't have to mess with any certificate trust setup uh, because it's they NGROC actually has just a regular certificate that they purchased. Um, also, it provides a DNS name so that I can browse there, say from my phone or anywhere I want. And all of that makes mobile device testing a lot easier as you can imagine um, because I can just start playing with my site using any device that's on the internet. So uh, that these are the reasons why NGROC has basically become the darling of the Teams development community. But what if your company won't let you use NGROC? Well, looking at this list, some of these items, there's other ways to accomplish them. HTTPS support, host naming, even mobile device testing. This can all be done locally. And in fact, web developers have been doing them locally for a long time. It's more work than NGROC, but it's certainly possible. It's that incoming tunnel, the ability to receive messages initiated in the cloud that's going to make us need NGROC. So if you're looking for a tunnel-free strategy for Teams development, the real question is, do you need incoming connections from the internet when debugging your app? And the answer is, if you're building tabs, task modules, or configuration pages, no. Those connections are all initiated locally from the Teams client. Some people seem to think that having Azure Active Directory single sign-on is going to require suddenly NGROC. Well, it does require your local web server to host a web service, which calls out to Azure AD, but the web service is called locally, so no, you still don't need it. Now I have a, a whole video, which I'll link to at the end, that shows how to set up uh, your local web server to do things like SSL termination so that you can do this local debugging. Let me just show you as a quick teaser, I'll show you how it works. Uh, here I am um, working with my single sign-on application. It is hosted locally at devappsforteams.local on port 3000. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and run this. And if I see my picture, that means single sign-on worked. And as you'll see, drum roll please, it actually does work and no NGROC involved. So check out the other video for that. But what if you really do need one of those incoming connections? Maybe you're building a bot or a messaging extension or an outgoing webhook, which is outgoing from Teams to your app. Maybe you've signed up for Microsoft Graph change notifications, so you get an incoming call when some files change or when the present status of some users is changed. These are all reasons why your app would need to accept an incoming connection. And for instance, here's a bot example. A user types something in to Teams to talk to the bot. Teams then sends a message to your bot through the Azure Bot channel service through somehow getting into your local web server for the bot to run. So let me actually demonstrate how this works with NGROC. So here I actually have three programs running, Teams, NGROC, and Bot Composer, which is where my bot is locally running. Bot Composer has a local web server built in. So if I type a message to my bot, you're gonna see it go through NGROC, the bot will run and then the bot will reply. So there's the message and there's the reply. Now, notice that the reply did not show up in NGROC. The reason for that is that the reply did not require an incoming connection. My local web server called out in order to send the message back. And so there was really no need for an incoming request. So what are the alternatives? Well, Actually, one is to not debug locally. 
You could, for instance, deploy your code to an Azure app service and use the remote debugger. Or you could debug in a virtual machine. And from inside of there, you could open an, an internet connection or just use ngrok, but do it off of the corporate network in an isolated environment where it's safe. However, I do want to point out one option that only works for bots that allows you to go back to a completely local scenario. And that is the bot framework emulator. So here I again have the bot composer, but I clicked that test in emulator button that you see, and that brought up the bot framework emulator. I'm going to get all kinds of tracing because now I've just cut teams and the bot framework and ngrok all out of the loop, which is great, except for one thing. It doesn't really support all of the team's features. So if I want to do a messaging extension, if I want to do user authentication, there's a number of things that I would actually still need ngrok for anyway. I hope this video was helpful in both understanding ngrok, how it relates to Microsoft Teams development, and also what some of the alternatives are. For a more in-depth examination of this topic, please check out the companion article at aka.ms slash ngrok article. I also have an article and video on how to set up for local tab debugging without using ngrok. Thanks so much for watching. If you like the video, please don't forget to click that like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more Microsoft 365 developer videos.